The purpose of this video is to walk you through the importing of your files from the Rogue Go 2 after you've made your oral history interview. So you're here, you're at the computer, you've got your receiver and your two microphones handy. Um, you've got a recording on your phone, which you're going to get onto the computer, and probably some pictures on your phone of your interview subject. Now, we're going to be using ultimately Final Cut Pro to edit our audio and get it into YouTube so we can generate an artificial intelligence transcript that we go on and edit. And Final Cut Pro 10 really functions properly with an external hard drive. Now, to the extent that I have them on hand, I'm going to be issuing you hard drives. But if you don't, if you already have a hard drive, that's perfectly okay. It needs to be formatted, however, in Mac OS format, uh, ideally in the extended journaled format. But if it is a Mac OS drive, it'll work just fine with Final Cut Pro, whether it's a USB, USB-C, or Thunderbolt 2. These drives that I have right now are equipped with the older Thunderbolt 2 port on them right now. Um, but you, each of the iMacs in the documentary studio um, each have a Thunderbolt 2 cable connected to them. Um, that, so we're good to go. So the first thing you're going to do is go ahead and plug in your external hard drive. Now you're ready to start importing the footage from your Rode GoTo recorders, each microphone. So what you're going to do is go ahead and open up Rode Central. So we're going over here, um, finding our app, and it's over here, Road Central, and we have it open, connect a device to get started. So we go ahead and do that. We'll connect our microphone, and there it is. And um, I just recorded a short little two-minute audio clip to demonstrate this. So I'm going to go ahead um, and export this as a WAV file. Now, there are one or two different ways you can do this. You can go ahead and export directly, but I think it's a good idea to go ahead and rename the file because in this case, I've got microphone B. Um, this allows you to avoid overwriting your file. So you go to export, um, we're going to go ahead and select our external hard drive. I'm going to make a new folder. Um, audio files. All right. I'm going to open that, and then it exports that file. You notice when it's exporting, it doesn't give you a chance to rename the file once you're exporting. So you really do want to rename it before you export. That's a really important thing, and you'll see why when I plug in the second microphone. So I go ahead and unplug microphone B. I'm done with it. I plug in microphone A, and I click on it. And it, there's a little glitch in the software. It's going to call it microphone B. We want to, again, rename this. This one is microphone A. All right, and we're going to export that. It doesn't remember where it's supposed to go. It's one, another one of the, my opinion, shortcomings of the software. Put it in test audio files. We export that in progress. All right. Once you've exported both of your files from the Rogue Go 2, um, maybe you have more than one if you start and stop your, your recording for some reason, but most of you will probably have just one file. Um, you're done with the Rogue Go 2 at this point. You've copied those files to your hard drive. You can go, just go and um, you know plug them in to charge them up, uh, put them back in the wallet, return them to the Digital Humanities Studio. Now the rest of your work is going to be done with the hard drive. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and close Road. Um, and if we look at our our drive, Buffalo in this case, Buffalo 12. We have our two audio files. I have on my desktop, I also have a short file of when I was recording with the phone using the, of course, the um, RC19 cable. And that allowed me to have a second wave file that is both microphones mixed 
um, and alternatively you can use that. Also, I have a beautiful picture of myself um, because we're going to need a photograph to lay over the audio. And we need to do this because YouTube does not allow you to upload an audio only file. The reason, one of the reasons why we're using Final Cut Pro is we're taking our audio tracks and turning them with the combination with them in a photograph into a video file that we can upload to YouTube. So now we're ready to get started with Final Cut Pro. So Final Cut Pro will be loaded on the, the uh, desktop down at the tool, um, so uh, toolbar. So we're going to go ahead and open it and say we'd like to access volumes, uh, a removable volume, okay. Final Cut works with what we call um, uh, the Apple bundle file format. And it does this by creating libraries. So the first thing when we get into a new Final Cut setup here, you'll notice over in this window here, these are your libraries. This little uh, four boxes with stars inside, those are the libraries. And there's usually a default library in Final Cut if nothing else has been opened. You may open Final Cut and there are other libraries that have been left open by other people. But the bottom line is, is you want to create your own library on this external hard drive. So what we're going to do is go to File, New, Library. All right. So now this is a really important step. Um, Apple wants to default to movies, but we're going to go ahead and find our hard drive. And it's perfectly okay to put your library in the root drive of the, um, the hard drive because Again, it's, a, it's a, an Apple bundle file format, meaning it is, in, in essence, a folder that contains many things. Your library is a folder. So we're going to go ahead and call this Test Audio Project. All right, we save it. If you want to see what that looks like on your hard drive, you'll see now, um, it's going to start, uh, if we go back there, this is your root drive. We see we've got a, on your, your hard drive, it says Test Audio Project. It's the little um, bundle for Final Cut Pro 10. This is a file format that you can use to open up into Final Cut. If Final Cut's not open and you want to work with it, you can just merely plug in your hard drive and click on your library file, and it'll open Final Cut and open your library. The nice thing about this is then using this library, every time you import data, it imports it to this library. It keeps it all on your portable hard drive. There's no accidentally importing things to the computer you happen to be using. It keeps it all together. This is why Apple came up with this in Final Cut. In the previous version of Final Cut, and I realize this is going back to the Stone Ages, you ended up in Final Cut 7 with files all over the place. This really gets rid of that problem. It keeps all your movie files together in one library. So we're going over here, and now we're ready to import media. So you can easily, this is an empty library in Test Audio Project. It's going to import into whatever is highlighted right here. So I'm going to go ahead and import media. You can either click there, you can click there, or you can go File, Import, Media. All right. There are many different ways you can do this. Uh, say OK, we're going to access this. Now we want to click on our Buffalo 2, our test audio files, and there are all the files that we want. Microphone A, microphone B, our image file, and just for fun, I included the WAV file from our iPhone. Um, some of you may find it easier just to use the mixed WAV file from the iPhone. I think that's perfectly okay. The same procedure will apply and I'll point out the differences between the two in just a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and import all of those items. Now in Final Cut, the default setting is to display them like this, which I don't know, but if you see this little icon up here, it allows you to actually see a viewer of what you're highlighting and the image. So in this case, this is the, the iPhone, and it shows a waveform, what we call waveform. We have microphone A and microphone B. All right, so each of these iMacs also has a set of headphones attached, and this is a, a good thing to um, put on. You can listen to your audio when you make fine-tune adjustments. Using a good pair of studio headphones such as these 
will make a big difference in the overall quality of your finished product when you're doing editing, and that's why they're here. One of the problems you'll notice about microphone A and microphone B, and you can see this, we can drag these windows over to make them a little bigger. Microphone A and microphone B, when you go and turn on the receiver, the signal doesn't get to them quite at the same time, and you'll notice that they're a little bit out of sync. Um, not a lot. One is two minutes, one second, and 22 frames. One is uh, two minutes, one second, and 15 frames. And um, that is a problem, which means they're not perfectly in sync. So we have to synchronize microphone A and microphone B. This sounds more complicated than it is, but it is not. It is actually very easy to do in Final Cut. Here's how you do it. So we just simply select both microphone A and microphone B. You can hold down the command key to you know select multiple items. You go up here to clip. Synchronize clips. And it'll give you an option to rename it. Um, I'm not going to bother right now. And you hit OK. And what it does is it listens to the two clips and it synchronizes them. Um, and you'll notice right here we have a synchronized clip. These are our two microphones synchronized together. If you double click on it, you can see what that looks like. Here's microphone A, here's microphone B. All right, now that you've got your microphone synced, you have a synchronized phone. So uh, this Rode synced file is what you're going to use or track. It's the two tracks combined into one synchronized track. Um, it's time to make a project. So you're going to go File, New, Project. And we'll call this Test Audio Project. And so a Test Audio Project is where you go and put all your media together. So if I go and double click on Test Audio Project, here it is. You can see whatever's in your timeline is labeled right here on this bar. What I want to do is go ahead and put my synchronized microphones down into the timeline. You can do that a couple of ways. You can either use this one, add it to the end of the storyline, and simply drag it onto your storyline. And there it is. One thing you can do at this point to sort of equalize your audio is go ahead and hit you'll see that you have an option to go and click on this little um, audio symbol here and this is what's called the inspector. Um, if you have video there will also be an option for video settings. If you go ahead and click on this little magic wand icon right here where it says audio analysis and you click on it it'll go and listen to it and what happens is you'll notice is, is that it went and raised some of the audio levels up to the zero the so that the tops are at the zero dB level. It made it just a little bit louder, not increasing the volume. There's a difference between volume and loudness, well, I'll explain later. So your audio now is right where you want it. We need to do one more thing. We need to attach an image to our file. Now, when you have a still image, Final Cut automatically goes and makes it 10 seconds long if you drag it into the timeline. Remember, this is a video file, so it's a still image that shows for just 10 seconds. And this will be an image of your interview subject that you'll put on to the audio track. So I just dragged a picture of me in this little test. And what you want to do is go ahead and drag it to the length of, of how much uh, the length of the video. So in this case you get to this end and you can drag it there to the beginning and then drag it there all of the way and if it, if it doesn't want to grab the end hit the end button that's for snap and it will snap to the end of it. Now you're really ready to go ahead and export this file so you're ready to upload it to YouTube and make a little um, transcript of what you uploaded. So I'm going to go ahead um, I'm ready. I click on Test Audio Project. When you go to export anything or share, as it is in the, the Mac OS parlance, um, you want to make sure that you are highlighting the project, this timeline. 
that you want to export, right? Because if you, if you go and or click on microphone A, it's going to export microphone A or share microphone A. So make sure you're on test audio project. Go file, share, YouTube and Facebook. And what this is doing is going to create a, a file that is appropriate for uploading to our YouTube channel. So what we're going to do is go over here to settings and we can make it, um, you know, you can make it all the way up to HD if you really want to um, for your test uh, interview. If you're just doing this, something you're going to delete later, you probably don't need to do that. So I'm just going to put a low res in 10, uh, 1080 by 608. It's going to be much smaller. Um, we go next, and it gives you a place where you want to put it. Well, I'm going to go ahead and save it on my portable hard drive. Save. All right. Something that's very important about Final Cut, you'll notice this little donut-shaped button up here in the upper left-hand corner. This is, are your background tasks. In any time Final Cut is working using stuff, using this portable hard drive, you see the light lit up on it, um, you don't want to unplug the hard drive or quit Final Cut. Final Cut has to complete these tasks. If you have a half an hour interview file, it might take Final Cut five minutes, maybe less, to generate a video file from your stuff. So you want to let it be, you want to let it sit. When it's done, you'll see up here in this window, all these things are idle and you've got a check mark. There are no more background ta ta tasks to do in Final Cut. So um, we've imported our audio, we've synchronized our microphones, we've atta created a timeline, we've put our synchronized audio into the timeline, We've attached an image and stretched it to the length of the audio in the timeline. And we've gone ahead and exported our project in a format that we can upload to YouTube. So we're done with the importing and editing part of the project. Now it's time to upload it to YouTube.